Hi hey guys, welcome to another tutorial here from Final Cut Pro X Tutorials. And on this YouTube video, we're going to be looking at how to create a Final Cut title um, in Motion 5, which is then editable within Final Cut Pro. Um, the two software packages will work together. Um, Final Cut Pro already comes with a bunch of titles that will fulfill a lot of your needs, but if you want to create some custom titles, some custom effects to give your videos your own personal touch, then Motion 5 will allow you to create those customized title sequences which can then be edited and reused within Final Cut Pro. So when you open up Motion 5, you're going to go to Final Cut Title and we'll create this. Um, now I'm going to remove the default objects which it provides us with and I'm going to change this group name here to the text group. Okay, now we're going to add some text first of all, and I want 3D text, so you press and hold down and you get the 3D text option, and I'm going to type in tutorials there. If we come over to here to our um, inspector, we can change various properties. So I'm using the font called Bank Gothic, but you can change the font to be whatever it is you want. I want this one. We can alter our uh, font size and all other different types of parameters. Now there's a checkbox here, editable in FCP. That means editable in Final Cut Pro. So if you want this text to be um, people to be able to change it or edit it within Final Cut Pro, um, then you want this checkbox to be ticked. So when I bring this into Final Cut Pro, I can reuse this title for different video sequences. I don't have to remake it again in Motion 5, and all I, could, all I have to do is just edit the text, but all the animations and everything that I've created in Motion 5 will remain. So make sure that checkbox is ticked. It is by default anyway. So now I want to go to my appearance and I'm going to change the material into a metal material and I'm going to go for nickel. And we can change our lighting. So you can choose whether you want the light source from above, diagonal, etc. So I'm going to go with a diagonal right type of lighting. And we can change our inside corners to be rounded or mitered or straight. I'm going to leave all those 3D parameters as they are, other than maybe the depth. I'm going to make the text just a little bit deeper, a little bit more three-dimensional. And we can change our front edge to be a little bit more rounded or flat. I'm going to round it a little bit there okay so once you're happy with how your text is looking arrange it on our screen and now we're going to add the next element which is going to be a line so we'll grab the line here and we're going to draw a line hold down shift so it stays straight underneath there i'm going to change my brush color to a silverish color and we're going to make the line a little bit thicker. Now I want to animate this coming onto the screen so let's just center this up underneath our text. Okay now I'm going to animate the first and last points so I'm going to make both points to start with to be 50 percent and we'll add those as a keyframe. Make sure in our timeline we're at the beginning. I'm going to go forward around 10 frames and we'll drag this to zero and that to 100. And now you'll see we have an animated line coming onto the screen there. And I also want to animate the text opacity. So in our appearance here, we're going to go to opacity. I'm going to drag that down. Mm -hmm. 
that's the opacity of our substance and our reflective material properties there, there. so that's the opacity there we drag that down add a keyframe I'm going to come forwards and we'll bump the opacity up so now we have our line drawing on and our text fading onto the screen there now I want to add into this um, some smoke in the background so come over to our library and we're going to go to our uh, um, particle emitters smoke and choose the type of smoke that we want. So we want a rising smoke like this, I think. Vapors. Let's do vapors. Certainly don't want the steam vent. Or the smoke cloud. I think the rising smoke will look nice, so I'm going to create a new group here and we'll call this group effects we're going to drag the rising smoke into that group there okay so now you see here we get this smoke effect animated already for us I'm going to move the effects group to be below the text because I want the text to be above the smoke not the smoke in front of the text like so okay I'm gonna center up this effect a little bit so it's behind the text like so and I want to bring this effect move back a little bit so it starts a little sooner. It's a little too soon. There. I'm also going to drag it up slightly. Now we're going to play around with the parameters of this smoke here in the properties. Scale it up a little bit. Now let's check that out. Now, okay. So there we have now our smoke rising up behind our text. Like so. I'm going to fade that out a little bit. Because it's a little bit too opaque. I want it to be more faded in the background. So I'll knock down the opacity. Now the smoke is less in your face. It's more of a background thing. The next thing we're going to do is add in a camera that we can animate so we'll grab our camera from over here switch to 3D so now we have a camera which we can then animate so we can choose which view we want we'll go for a perspective view so you can see this is the view that our camera has got here so 
I'm going to start the camera from there. And I'm going to move it back so that the text is a little bit smaller. Okay, and then we'll add keyframe for the camera position. Oops, I'll just remove that keyframe, go back to the beginning. Our keyframe will be here. I'm going to come forwards. I'm going to move this camera into shot there. and center it like so now if we change our view to the active camera we play you see our camera moves in towards the title so there's our animation so it's pretty simple um, we're not going to go into too much more um, detail and work on this because the main purpose of this um, actual tutorial really is how we can then utilize this in Final Cut Pro later. So um, we're going to go to Save As and we're going to create a new category, which will be the Tutorials category. No theme, and we're going to save a preview movie, and we're going to call this Smoky Title. Okay, and then when we go to publish, that will now make this title available in Final Cut Pro. So we'll open up Final Cut Pro. Once Final Cut Pro is open and we come to our titles here, you'll see that now the category tutorials is available. And there is our title that we just created. So we can drag this then into our video. Like so. We could choose to move these video sections forward. We can insert some um, blank space. So we'll insert into here. Insert a generator and we'll put a gap. And we can drag this text back. So there's our title and our video comes in. Uh, this split screen video we created in a previous tutorial. And now if you select this text, you'll see that you can actually begin to edit it. So we could change this to say something different we can alter the size of the text. Um, we can also change the font. So after changing these things, um, we can also change yeah, the lighting style. We can change the material. So we could change this to a uh, copper material, for example. Um, after making these changes, it won't actually change our original animations or anything like that and our uh, um, original file in Motion 5 will still remain the same. It's only here that these changes are made because we checked the editable in Final Cut Pro um, box when we created this title. So certain parameters are editable but you'll see the other things like for example the the line we cannot edit that, we cannot change the animation, we cannot do anything about the the smoke, 
um, because all of that stuff is already fixed. All we can change are the published parameters of the title, which in this case is the text. And over here in Final Cut Pro, uh, in Motion 5, everything still is exactly as, it, as, as we created it. And any changes that we make here would then be subsequently also reflected here in, in Final Cut Pro. So if we were to change um, some aspect of the animation, so let's say, for example, our line, when we animate that, we will properties and it was our start and ending point of the line which is here so if we were to edit these um, to make this zero and zero and then we'll jump forwards to 100 percent we'll see that now actually the line is drawn on from one side as opposed to being from the middle. So we save those changes. And once those changes have been saved, they'll automatically be reflected over in Final Cut Pro. So it takes a little bit of time because we also generate a preview. So we come back over here to Final Cut Pro and that change to our title should now also be reflected here. You'll see that now the line is being drawn on from the one end as opposed to from the middle. So any changes that are made in Motion 5 to the template will automatically be reflected over in Final Cut Pro, but changes that you make to the published parameters here in Final Cut Pro will not be reflected in Motion 5. So you can create these titles, um, use it as a template, and then you can reuse it multiple times in Final Cut Pro in whatever project you want, and you can change certain parameters, but your main template will still remain as it was before. So I hope you found this useful. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.